was a little boy, my daddy took me on a court and cut a racket handle short and told me you should learn a sport. In the suburb of Milan, he put a racket in my hand and we started hitting squash balls. Well, I knew from early on that I'd be good. I was blessed by the gods because we had some courts at school. I would always find a way every minute of the day. You could never, ever get me off the squash court. Yeah, I never got a chance to get a girlfriend Spending every second, every minute that I could spend Hitting balls against the wall and moving smooth across the floor Just try and get me off the squash court Well, in the end, I started rising up the rankings Tournament to tournament was physically demanding Anyone who knows me decorated trophies God, I made a home inside a squash court Yeah, squash is my addiction Satisfaction guaranteed When I stop, you won't hit my back And drop shot back to me. Yeah, squash is my addiction. I take it in truth in a sleep. And, that's right. and it flows right through my bones just like my papa said to me. Yeah. Come on. Forehand, backhand, hit me with your bang bang. Feather in my hand is an extension of my arm, man. Every single shot has got you dancing to the hip hop. Take the ball and short and I'm putting the cheeky drop shot. Hot shot, I pick it up non stop. Addicted, I can't stop. Embedded in the hip hop, I get onto my trick shot. Controlling the T zone, I don't need no reason. Gotta get myself in shape before the start of the season. The perfect length was my strength, y'all. Into attack from defense was my way, yo. The one with the ball, it's like a sixth sense, y'all. Listen to me, cause I'm stuck. To make sense, yo I deploy you, give a racket to me We could have a game of singles You'll be down on your knees I can show you how to get yourself back onto the tee So let me take you on a squash course Squash is my addiction Satisfaction guaranteed When I stop, you won't hit my backhand Drop shot back to me Yeah, squash is my addiction Taking it intravenously And it flows right through my bones Just like Okay, so it's game on, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the warm-up. Bevan, how are you, mate? <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> right. I'm not too bad. Sorry, the uh, the reason we're the reason we're now <laughs> is uh, because you tell him, Jay. Okay, so this is take number about ten. <laughs> um, so take one, two, three, four, and five was basically ruined by Bentley A eating the microphone, um, <laughs> jumping up on the cable. Uh, the other ones were basically. Bevan, because he's useless. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna keep recording this time because I'm absolutely determined to get this through. So, Bevan, how are you, mate? <laughs> Thanks, mate, for telling everyone I'm a yeah, probably yeah, I'm an idiot. Uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, no, I'm really really good. We 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 we've had a fantastic month. Uh, basically, we've had so much good feedback, mate. Yeah. Um, and it's um. It's a little bit overwhelming, to be honest with you. It's really, really nice. It is. It's amazing, actually. Like, okay, I mean, let's just keep it real. This show is, we've done two shows, right? This is our third, okay? We've had the first show, which was just basically us having a goof around as a pilot just to see whether we'd enjoy it. Uh, we had some awesome feedback. People said it was very real. Um, I really am um, as squash illiterate as I come across, which is great. Um, and it's been really good then we had show number two where we had a guest on all about like sports psychology and stuff like that we've got a great lineup ahead of us for this show as well which we'll talk about in a second but over the overall mate we've had some fantastic followers um i want you to read out one i want you to read out what is your favorite piece of feedback so far mate well we've you know i i've attempted uh to guide the squash pod <laughs> <laughs> through a little bit of social media which has been a lot of fun um so we're we're on twitter obviously you know squash underscore at squash underscore pod um we're on facebook yeah um 
Uh, we're on Instagram as well. So we're regularly putting stuff out there. And, and we're on LinkedIn and, now. And we're on LinkedIn now. Obviously, a little bit limited on the LinkedIn. <laughs> we are, yeah. Uh, I think we, you know, maybe two people on LinkedIn know about us. I think but, we are. But I think we there. are the two people that know about us, which <laughs> yeah. is why I wanted to find it. Yeah, admin people. Yeah, admin yeah. people. So if you are on LinkedIn um, and you're not even and you're not on anything else, if you're on LinkedIn, search the Squash Pod um, and and follow the page because, uh, well. Why not? Mm. It's it's there, so I've used yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So um, it it any bit of feedback, constructive or um, negative, well, negative or positive, we really do want to hear from you, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because you know, uh, a lot of people, some you know, one or two people have asked, you know, um, that what are we trying to achieve with the podcast? Okay, so what we are trying to achieve is we are trying to reach two demographics if you like aren't we? yeah yeah, yeah. We, so, you know, we're, we're, we're working hard to get new people into the game um but also uh we're we're trying to appeal to the club players as well who know who know their stuff yeah um, and it's i'm it, not one of those players <laughs> i play squash yeah but i don't know my stuff yeah but i tell you what i do know though mate and i'm gonna chuck this out there because you don't actually know i'm about to say this but i've actually rehearsed this little bit Ooh, i okay. have mate i want to thank you bud because mm. A, the squash pod was your idea. Um, so just a little fill in on that. So I get a phone call one day um, from this guy that I barely knew saying, um, hey, but do you fancy doing a, a, a podcast about squash? And I'm thinking, I know nothing about squash. Uh, and then I realized it didn't matter, actually, that I knew nothing about squash. But it, that's the one of the demographics that we're trying to track. So if, if I don't know the information then obviously we will talk about it because then I'm educating myself and by educating myself, I'm educating everyone else. But you've really driven this show and I want to congratulate me because it, I genuinely, genuinely, and this is live on the podcast, don't think that this show would be where it is today if it hadn't been for the effort that you put in. Oh, mate, thank you. I do all the sort of technical stuff. Um, so any sort of sound qualities and stuff like that, that is genuinely my fault. Uh, the sound quality on the last show was horrendous. I know that. I couldn't edit it out. So apologies to everybody. We did have some negative feedback about it. And, you know, I had to put my hands up um, and say that I used a new piece of equipment, uh, which I've now got rid of and gone back to basics again. Uh, so the new piece of equipment, what was happening was the two mics were interfering mm-hmm. with each other. And I didn't realize that happened until the editing process. So for the listeners who did feedback on that, um, I do want to say sorry. That is genuinely my fault. And there's a little bit of a technical issue actually on a part of this show, which is a the interview I had with Marcus. Yeah. Um, purely because it was over Skype and these things happen. So, um, but the actual interview is cool. And guys, you're going to listen to that in a bit. It's absolutely brilliant. And I had an absolute laugh. The guy is genuinely a really nice guy, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a good opportunity to speak to him online and stuff quite a bit. Him and Monica, um, they really trying to do something quite different so we really hope that you enjoy the interview yeah Yeah. i I definitely enjoyed doing it um so that's like kind of all the serious bits going out and i'm also going to say mate that's probably the most serious me and you've actually been to with each other (laughs) since i've known you yeah um so i i i am self-confessed squash idiot and bevan self-confessed tells me um a lot (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, yeah. so that's cool so yeah so you've also been on your travels as well haven't you so um regardless to me having the the interview with with marcus which unfortunately you couldn't be there um but you've been uh with the wizards recently as well how did that go mate i have yeah um all i can tell you right now is that it was brilliant yeah yeah we 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 were really really lucky to be invited by mike workman um which you know at the moment like you said earlier we've done two podcasts you know, and who are we, really? Do you know what I mean at the moment? Dude, um, who are I'm a freaking legend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know who you are. Yeah. I mean, you're a nobody, but I'm a legend. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, we're really, really chuffed to be invited down there and had a great evening um, meeting some of the players. So we can't wait for you guys to hear that as well. Awesome. Stop right there. Don't say any more because I want the guys to listen to that independently. But... So, right, what else have we got going on? Um, right, I want you to go back because I asked you a particular question and you failed to answer me. Um, <laughs> what was your <laughs> favourite feedback? 
Ah, oh, right, yeah. So um, we've had a few few bits and bobs out there, but probably one of the, the nicest ones I've had uh, was from Liz Can. Uh, she tweeted um, out there to say, I caught up with a brilliantly amusing podcast, uh, feeling inspired, so I'm off to my beginner's class now. Podcast is grassroots and utterly brilliant. Well done, Jamie and Bevan. Some laugh out loud moments. I like so, the fact that it's welcome, Jamie yeah, and Bevan. Yeah. I want to listen to this this show because it sounds amazing. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. us! It's yeah, us! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's one more though, mate. Oh um, right, yeah, yeah. From a Twitter handle called um, Dave One Two Three Four, and he says, "That's um, an imaginative name." Great job, great job, um, Bevan. Probably, if you want to improve the podcast, maybe get rid of Jamie. <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> No, you, you, you already guessed it. It would have been legend if he said that, mate. My delivery was so Yeah, and I shocking. genuinely thought that Dave1234 existed. I mean, <laughs> hey, no, I, no. I just thought that was an imaginative name. No. Right, dude. I think do, it's probably truth in what, what imaginative Dave said. <laughs> yeah, because it's in your head, apparently. Um, right, I want to talk a little bit about uh, one of our recent, I'm going to say sponsors, mate, because they, they've been really good with us uh, this month. Sports Direct? No, not well. We didn't pick up Sports Direct, unfortunately. Well, they emailed me. Did they email you? Yeah, they said we want you, Bev. Yeah. Not you, Jamie. I had that from Caracal, but we, uh, we'll move on. Whoosh. Um, YC Sports, come on, yeah. mate. <clears throat> okay, so um, YC Sports, one of the one of the best local retailers out there in Wales. Um, they have supported us from day one. Um, so huge shout out to to the Limbs. Um, they are a fantastic place for you to go if you are into racket sports, full stop. So if you like badminton, squash, tennis, um, or indeed any other sport, get yourself yeah, they, down there. Yeah, they've got like a whole range of stuff, haven't they? they? They've, they've got everything. So and, and they're online as well. And they're online, yeah. So, you know, that's enough about that. I just wanted to say thanks to YC. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, they also do um, racket restringing as well if uh, yeah. if you want if you need any of that and you're in the Cardiff area. Um, but, yeah, they are online. Um, and if I remember, because I'm quite bad at doing this, actually, I, I, I do realise I'll put the link in the comments below. Hey. Um, right, so what else we got? Ah, I want to talk quickly about... One other little bit in the warm-up, because this has got to be the longest warm-up we've done. Um, but then more information's coming in, so it's really cool. Yeah. Um, we had some feedback from um, a guy called Dan um, from Cardigan uh, Squash Club. Uh, so a quick shout-out to them. Now, they've got a slight issue, uh, which I want to bring to everyone's attention so cardigan squash club um they're a really small club but they are the only club in that area of cardigan Mm -hmm. and they've got a leaking roof (coughs) so and they're now fundraising to basically get the 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 leak repaired um because what happens is and in their words not mine they're the only squash club in britain that gets rained off (laughs) i think there's a there's a a guy in my my team for uh, rabina who is who's from Cardigan? It's his it's his home club. No. Yeah, he mentioned it to me last week. So, you know, I, I you know I wonder. Yeah, tell us a bit more. Sorry, mate. So yeah, so um, they've had it like temporary fixed, but literally what they're worried about is yeah. if it rains heavy and yeah. the water comes in. Yeah. Um, and let's be honest, it's Wales, um, so that's what happens. Um, and it's Cardigan, so there's there's actually still rain falling from last year yeah. um but basically if the rain gets in through the roof it's going to warp the floor uh that'll be it they can't afford the roof to be repaired so they certainly can't afford a new floor in which case that would be another court shut another club so shut they, down they've, they've got only one court have they um i'm not 100 percent sure but they've they did send me over some photos of that it does look quite bad so if it's just a shout out they um if you hook up with me on my facebook page and stuff like that or if you go to we'll post out anyway because we've already posted out on twitter yeah. we we'll post out on instagram we'll post out on the facebook page as well but if you um if you go to the cardigan squash club website there, there is a link on there i believe um where you can actually donate and and literally you know if everybody that plays squash donated a quid 
that would probably be enough to save the club. And and I think yeah. what that's what we're all about. I think, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll give a bit, little bit more information on um on their plight, if you like, and through our social of, media and, and and what they need. And I think everyone should, you know, if everyone can afford, certainly I I think you know I'll give it. I can do a bit more than a pound. Um, yeah. I'm self-employed. Yeah. Oh really? So so more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah Larry. i might have to go with that dinner that week yeah. but i'm definitely going to donate so guys follow our social feeds and you'll you'll hear a bit more about that you know we're really keen to work with um cardigan to try and uh, get some fundraising Absolutely. for that roof or, yeah. or at least some of it so who knows let's see what we can do with that um so i think that ties up the warm-up yeah spot on So, Bev, as always, mate, uh, this is the bit about interesting facts. Which you have none. Oh, come on, man. I actually do. And <laughs> I, no, nah, man, I'm going to say it. And, right, come on. Because Bevan disagrees with me. But we're talking about technology, right? So we're talking about yeah. technology and sport. Okay? okay. So besides, like, technology moving on from round rackets to the side, you know, the rackets we have now, the old wooden rackets, and we've got some pinned up on the wall in the court so that's one advancement in technology in in sport where they used to be made out of wood and now they're made out of um all sorts of graphite and whatever material um so that's one but keeping this the subject on on rackets did you know and i'm not going to say did you know because i know you do but did you have you ever seen the racket where it actually you plug the racket in it works on bluetooth right so when you're playing, it'll connect to your phone, okay, and it'll tell you like the speed that you're serving. Um, it'll tell you if you're serving angles on. It'll tell you how many times you've hit the ball. Stop laughing at me, Bev. This is a really cool piece of kit, man. So it tells you the speed you're serving at. Yeah. To your phone. Yeah. The angle. Yeah, so it tells and, you like. And, and how many times you hit the ball. You hit you, the ball. Yeah, um, and it, it sort of. I mean, it, it, to be honest with you, it probably wouldn't work with you, Bev, because you bounce the ball a hundred times, get your breath back between serves. Oh, <laughs> wow! But <clears throat> yep, for true. someone like myself, who's a you know a fit little whippersnapper, yeah, um, I just think it'd be quite a good piece of kit. And could you imagine, like, we're going to talk about the interaction wall later on in the show, but could you imagine tying something like that in with the interaction wall? I think of all <laughs> of all the technology out there, you pick in the most ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the ridiculous bit of technology. I mean, literally, so what, a bit of technology in the grip of your racket. Yeah, it's in the handle. Yeah, the racket. in the handle. It's in the Twitter so, handle. And it, and it racket handle. So literally, you play a really hard game, yeah, and then you literally run off court like a little excited kid to go and see how many times you hit the ball. Yeah. That's 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 in no way beneficial information whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but it also tells you, like, the speed of your serve and all that sort of stuff. Do you not find that interesting? What if, you, if you're losing every game... You know, who cares? Well, which I do. <laughs> yeah. I would say, if, if, you know, what are you aiming to hit the ball a lot of times? Because if you are, you know. But I suppose that wouldn't that like tell you, you know, how long your rallies are, or. I would be more interested to know, uh, on the fitness angle. So, you know, calories. So fitness watches interest me. Do you use a fitness watch? I've mate, I don't just use a fitness watch. You do. Mate. What have you got? I've got an Apple Watch. Apple Watch. Well, they're one of the best, aren't they? I am looking at my Garmin. Wow. So I've got a Garmin. Someone's got to buy them, otherwise they go out of business. It's not one of the best ones. Um, it's uh, like mid-range. I think it's about 260 quid. <laughs> is uh, that mid-range? Yeah, Wait, mid-range is about 260 quid. I only paid 299 quid. for my Apple Watch. Oh, how long? Yeah, which which version is that? Um, well, I, I don't know. Let's not pick bones, shall we? <laughs> well, well, don't, let's not ask questions. <laughs> uh, series three. <laughs> I got series three. Oh, cool. well done. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what? So, what sort of information does that give you? I'm looking at mine now. Tells I'm going to be honest, right? Steps, no, gen, like genuinely. Calories, uh, distance. I'm I'm going to be genuine, right? I I don't use it. I actually take it off. Looking at you, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you stick to your racket handle. How many hits? I don't really take any notice of all of that. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, right? With me, I'm very much basic. So I take all my technology off when I'm playing the game. Main, and I'll tell you for why. Because yeah. like, on my watch, they're great, but they are distractions. So to get it to work um, alongside your actual game, yeah, 
you also have to be connected to your phone, right? So in order to track what you're doing, the next thing you know, you've got emails coming through on your phone, you've got no, no, text no, messages. You, you don't, like on my, on the Garmin, mine's all in the phone. You yeah, I haven't got up, a Garmin there, I've got an Apple. You upload it later if you want to. Oh, no, no mine di- yeah. goes directly to my phone, yeah. so it's like constantly connected. So, like, I'm going to be honest, I take yeah. it off. Anyway. There, I'm not there, good enough. There's stuff out there. It's debatable as to how good it is at the moment anyway. So, I think most, like the heart rate monitors... They got a lot of work. I've used a lot it. of them. Used. I've seen a lot of them I being used, mate. I think the chest straps are still the most. I've got to admit, actually, you know, when I when I come off court, it's not a heart rate monitor I need, mate. It's a cardiac it's monitor. Yeah. It's a pacemaker. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You don't need training with them anymore, do you? You just sort of stick them on, and they say, and they tell you, you know, what's needed. Yeah. Well, I have so got that heart rate thing on my phone. Put one I'm... to your chest, and it says, uh, "Tell this guy no, not to bother Sit playing down. anymore." <laughs> uh, but I did use the heart rate thing on my watch, and it used to just go off the scale, mate. Well, yeah. I spent half my time running around in circles. Yeah. yeah. Mainly because more one leg doesn't work as well as the other. You want to be careful, mate. Your your heart's only got a certain number of beats in its lifetime. Oh, is it? Yeah. Do no. You know Do you not know that? No, you're talking it's rubbish. The, it's the way it works. No, it's not. A heart has got a certain number of beats. And the the that's how we end up dying. Did Dave one two three four tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, moving on because yeah. you're starting to anyway. to confuse me, and that's not hard either. Um, right, I want you to do me a favour because look, like, I I've always I'm I'm not going to deny it. Um, bare bones. Can you tell me what the Wizards game was you went to see? What league it is? And a little bit of information about it, mate. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't know. Okay. Um, so, yeah, went went to see the Wizards in the last game. Okay. Um, we had a fantastic time. Um, when I say we, you weren't there. No. <laughs> was I was in me. Slovenia, mate, you, playing squash. You were busy. You left me all on my own. Which, I'll, um, I'll which honest, was dangerous. I was super nervous. Yeah. But I got a chance to meet the Wizards. Yeah. Very, very cool. So you lose. I do lose. You lose. I do lose. So I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say um anything about, you know, that now. No, no. Um but just but, like the league and stuff like that. In terms of but p- people listening who want to know a little bit about the Wizards, um first interesting little fact about the Wizards, can you name a Welsh wizard, mate? Yes. Go on. Who? Peter Creed. No. Not not living. What he has to be dead? <laughs> Merlin, mate. Merlin. Ah, uh, mate. No, I'm, I might even edit that King out. King Arthur. Yeah, I know who Merlin is. Yeah. I might edit that out. But he was a wizard and he was from Wales. Yeah, yeah. He was actually, right. yeah. in theory, he was from, I can't remember where he's from, not, but. Um, he, he is Welsh. Yeah. But there's debate as to whether he was he was Welsh. Some say maybe Scottish. Don't know if that's true or not. Um, could, do you know can't the name? Just asked me do you that. know the name for Merlin in Welsh? And the and the word for squash in Welsh. Oh, Sorry, man. massive sidetrack. Sorry. Yeah, like seriously. Yeah. Okay. No. Mirdin. Mirdin. Is that in Welsh? That's, yeah. Sorry, uh, Welsh speakers. <laughs> that was terrible. Mirdin and, and Sponken for Welsh, for squash. Sponken. Sponken. I like that. Yeah. I can't speak well. Sponken. Um, right. So can you can yeah, if you keep doing this? Can you get back on track, please? Can so, you tell me a little bit about? Um, so the Wizards um, basically are in the PSL League. Do you know what the PSL League is? No. So it's the Premier Squash League, which is basically your footy fan. No. No. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like any sport? Basketball. Basketball. Okay, so the, it's like the best league in basketball, but for squash, for Sponken. For Sponken. Yeah. So Versponken. That's German. Versponken. Dude, let's not get sidetracked because okay. your accent's horrendous. Oh, okay, fair okay. enough. So, so it's the sorry you say. So yeah, I play I play basketball. I'm in a league. I play like a south division though. So um, okay. basketball split up into four divisions. So the I elite play... division has four divisions. No, yeah. So yeah, um, and then you play in the playoffs. Split. It's exactly the same in um, in PSL. Yeah. So PSL is like the equivalent of Premier League football or Premier League anything, split into north and south division. Uh, okay. Yeah. So within within those two divisions, there's normally five or six teams in each division. Okay. So at the moment, the Wizards are in. Well, at the moment, I, I assume in, normally all the time will be in the South Division. Yeah. Okay. Geographically, yeah. Geographically, yeah. yeah. So they compete for the title of 
national champion. Oh, right, okay. National champion. So the, the PSL used to be called uh, the Amex League um, and the National League, and it became the PSL in 2005. So what's the difference between... You may not answer, be able to answer this yet. What's the difference between the PSL and the PSA? So the Professional Squash Association yeah. and the Professional Squash League. So the, so the PSA is um, World League. Yeah. The PSL is National British Oh, okay. So it's a bit like Brit- British champion is PSL. Oh, okay. Yeah? I get that. Yeah? Well, I mean, I say I get it. I kind of get it. Uh, and for the more experienced <laughs> listeners who probably knew that answer, I do apologise. I genuinely <laughs> didn't know. So aiming it again at the squash idiots out there, um, which are in my league, um, hopefully we found that a bit interesting. So, But yeah. we'll hear more about you and the Wizards later on, bud. Yeah, we don't need more info than that, so yeah. Awesome. Okay, so um, that moves us nicely now onto the next section. Do you have anything else to add on this one? Um, I did want to mention um, an interesting little bit of factoid, if you like, oh, that gosh. happened on, on Twitter, mate. Oh, I like a bit of Twitter. bit of Twitter. Go I for love it. it. I'm absolutely loving Twitter. Absolutely. Bear in mind, right, that when I so, met Bev and he was a complete <clears throat> social media no, retard. No idea. And now he's like all over it. <laughs> So, um, I noticed a little conversation on Twitter started by a club um, Link, called Lincoln. Well, I'm assuming they're a club in Lincolnshire. So, they were at Lincolnshire Squash, yeah? Yeah. And they were talking about the best squash podcast out there in the world, yeah? In the world, yeah? Oh, uh, mate, please tell us that we were mentioned. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I take it as a no. So... In this conversation was um, Nick Matthews, Danny Lee. Um, um, I know Nick the Matthews. In, the In Squash he won, podcast. Yeah. He was world number one. Oh, well done, mate. You're uh, I listened to his show. You're learning. If you're listening, Nick, which I seriously doubt. Um, hello. How are you doing? Listen to our podcast. Hope you're enjoying it. And while we're there, mate, your show's epic. It's actually taught me loads. So, uh, yeah. So between yeah. the two of us, mate, we're going to create the Squash world. Do you know what his nickname is? The Wolf. Our <laughs> mate, tell you, mate, yeah. I'm learning really all good. the time. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is great. So anyway, um, Lincolnshire Squash tweeted out. <laughs> oh, generally, <laughs> honestly, mate, right, when you said what's the nickname, I was like, don't say Red Wine Hood. <laughs> don't say Red Wine Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely <Yeah>. the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. Right. So they they asked the question, who's got the who's listening to what podcasts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they broke down the podcast into um do you listen to comments from the couch which is widely accepted as one of yeah i listen to that actually it's, it, i like yeah. i call like it um holding court which is the one with nick matthews, nick matthews. um the in squash podcast which is with uh, jerry gibson i think is that the guy from canada yeah that's right oh, i've listened um, to a couple of his shows and then, and, the, and then they and then they um and then they the other option was other. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're the, in other. This gets really good. So I I tweeted Nick Matthews and um, um, comments from the couch, basically saying, you know, we do a podcast. <laughs> we do a podcast. It's called um, the Squash Pod, and we'd love it if you give it a listen. Basically, tweeted that out, um, and they all they all liked it. No. Which is so we awesome. We, we got a like from those guys, but. What was really interesting was when the when the results came in. So, <laughs> for, <laughs> so oh god. So okay. The official the official stats are that seventy four percent of people listen to comments from the couch, ten percent holding court, and um twelve percent to the in squash podcast. Yeah. Um, the remaining listen to other, which is three percent of the marketplace. So, Which is us. So our market share. It's three percent. No, no, way less because within that three percent is a loads of podcasts about squash. How so many podcasts are there about squash then? There's probably quite a few. Really? So, so uh, I suppose you've got other languages as well, haven't you? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that that's what we're working with, mate. That's where we are at the moment. Well, we've had three languages today. We've yeah. had Welsh. We've had yeah. German, mm-hmm. and we've had English. So we're multilingual on the squash pod. <laughs> So yeah, it, you know, um, I thought that was funny anyway. Sorry, mate. No, no, that's that's that is cool. Um, 
I'd like to us to have been in the twelve percent. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. comments from the couch is a good is a good one, and um, so's the one with Nick Matthews actually. I like quite yeah, like both yeah. of them shows. Yeah, totally. Awesome. So if you've got <laughs> nothing else to add, mate, for the serve, I think we should wrap it up and move on to the next section, which is the um, fantastic interview with Marcus Kane. Oh, it's unbelievable, people! The rally is on. Hello, Marcus. Hello. How are you? Guten Tag, mein Freund. Yeah, guten Tag. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm really good. Marcus, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, well, it's my pleasure, Jamie. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a quick question first before we sort of really got into um, the talking around about the technology. But I've noticed when I've listened to conversations and interviews with you in the past, people are really interested in this technology and it's very exciting stuff. Um, but I just wanted to ask you a little bit about yourself first. And I just wanted to know a little bit about your background and, and what's your story? Well, my story is, is, is I've always been a very uh, a little bit more of a shiny character. Um, I started my first company in advertising and marketing when I was 20, which was like very like outstanding designs and very crazy things for big brands, club designs, festival stages, and always with the approach of, of doing everything only once and doing and making it super outstanding. So we always try to um, not have um, the, the classic approach to this is a product that we do. It was always tailor-made. Big brands would come to us and say, we need the craziest fashion show that we ever had. Marcus, how we, do we do this? And we're like, okay, let's put this upside down. Let's put a roller coaster on a festival stage. Let's have a, um, a club design, which is only made out of glass and mirrors. Let's go to Antarctica and project on icebergs or like all sorts of fancy, fancy things that are like just out there to grab attention. That sounds absolutely epic. And obviously you've carried no, it was... into, right through your career as well. So that's that's pretty cool, mate. Well done. Um, why? How did you get involved with technology within squash? Well, I've always, first of all, I've always been 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 very technology driven. I always like to play around. I got my first video camera when I was fourteen. I was like designing a lot of video things. Played around with projectors always, like as long as I can think. Like projectors have been like one of my weapons of choice to create um, all sorts of effects and, and um, yeah, and experiences. And uh, played squash for the very first time, found out, oh, there might be an angle. I don't know why the sport is doing so, 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 uh, yeah, there's very bad reputation about it. Like it's, it's a lot of slightly older people, especially in Germany and in and, and the Switzerland and Austria. And it's it's not like the, the, the coolest sport that you can imagine. And the funny thing is when I played it for the first time, I thought it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so there was just this discrepancy between like, okay, what I've always thought squash is. And then I played it for myself and said, okay, that's actually quite amazing. Um, then we started looking into it. It was like, okay, how can we change that with tech, solve the participation problem, have it much more fun and engaging. Funnily enough, then been going into a lot of other sports and thought okay if this works well in squash it might work well somewhere else which we're also doing right now but found that coming back to squash it was actually the the, the biggest or the easiest way to let's let's call it this way to to take like the 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 rustiest car on the on the yard and say if we can turn that into a race car then we're set so um yeah we took the challenge and yeah, we've been doing uh, quite well and had quite some fun in the squash world, shaking things up a little bit so far. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I mean, I've seen several videos and obviously you were in Chicago with the wall recently as well, which it, it just looks phenomenal. And um, I, was list I listened to other podcasts as well. And I know Nick Matthews um, loves the wall as well. So that must be really personal oh, cool. for you. Yeah. Yeah, we've always been in contact with Nick and also now that he's retired, we're like, okay, come on, check out the interactive squash system because still like a lot of people haven't even witnessed the, the base of it. I mean, on, on a normal squash court and it is, it, it's literally a game changer. I mean, um, and the funny thing is we're now like trying to get like all the people that are actually part of the game was like, hey, you need to, you need to check it out and experience it. It's like, you know, you're still running around with an old dial phone. You've never actually tried what a, a smartphone with a touchpad does. Um, so, yeah, we're very much looking forward to him to have a little trip to Windfield Forest where we have like one installed in the UK. 
uh, I think he wanted to have like a weekend over there pretty soon. So excited to see that. Yeah. Fantastic. So this this technology then, um, when I first heard about it and when I was first sort of looking into it, I had this impression that you had to install basically a big iPad in the front of the squash board. But that's not the case, is it? It, it? it The technology can be fitted into pretty much any squash court. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's quite a. It's it's an upgrade that can be d- done within one or two days. Uh, we replaced the tin with a sensor-based tin, which is also looks much cooler. It's made out of glass and has cameras in it. Then we have a box which is mounted ab- approximately above the tee, um, and a sensor bar with it, which is uh, on top of the playing field uh, or the front wall. And that's basically it. We need an internet connection and some electricity, and then you have a smart court. The rest is a projection. Um, everything is designed very like industry grade and very reliable. So, um, I mean, we're, we're basically providing a business model for, for, for centers. So you don't want to have any cheap technology. You need to make it like super, super rigid and 24 seven, uh, capable. And yeah, we've been upgrading courts for the last couple of months. Now we have about 20 worldwide and so far the numbers are really good and everybody's really happy. Yeah. Sounds awesome. I mean, it, obviously, it's because it's a growing business as well. So, you know, um, looking at it from a business model, it, it is growing. So hopefully, I'm assuming your aim is to get this into, what, every squash court in the world? That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Well, of course. I mean, we already have the first centers now. Uh, I think that the PR about it is going to hit pretty soon because they haven't gone for it yet. Um, they're now getting their third court so they're upgrading to three interactive squash courts and a six court facility um because people are just i mean first of all it's it's a different business you're basically injecting a whole new audience which was never which would have never actually um stepped foot into a squash court to now pick up a squash racket and for us that's that's already like one of the biggest elements that we can bring to the sport because one of the things that obviously made the sport suffer a little bit not in the us but everywhere else is there's there's a lack of young people following up, which has to do with attention spans, with kids not being that active anymore in sports clubs, with everything else around us becoming more and more attractive as a um, as a um, activity of whether it's from drone racing or virtual reality or computer gaming or whatever it is. So yeah, I mean our aim is just like as soon as you can just inject loads of people into squash courts all the rest follows and it makes squash to be a highly profitable and feasible model again uh, instead yeah, of fighting exactly. over like is the court time now three pounds or three and a half pounds or four yeah. pounds per hour um i'd rather have like people get in line yeah absolutely because i mean like so in in local clubs for example i'm taking the local club that i'm involved with we have like a booking system um, and assumingly this type of technology can be sort of play tied into that booking system as well can't it so if if i was to book a court online and pay or whatever i pay for my court and then say i can then book the interaction wall separately i don't actually have to have it do i well there's there's different approaches so far i mean we've, we've tried all sorts of models it's really really interesting because although we only have 20 courts i mean there's three or four coming now every month um the, the the variety of models is is priced basically we've almost like uh, covered every one of them like from a place in Denmark that has 150 euros membership fee per six months so it's um, yeah they're basically like down to 15 uh, euros a month um, and you can play as much as you want down to places like in New York where the, the price to play one hour of interactive squash for outsider that's not at the club is $65. Um, as long as you, I mean, the main driving aspect is not like how much do you charge per hour or whatever it is. The main driving aspect is you can like make the cord to be used something between 250 and 300 hours per month. And then you have to put your business model behind it. We are now um, going to launch uh, our own booking system that also integrates into other existing booking systems, probably by summer or end of the year. Um, and I mean, it's an intelligent system. So as soon as you have a, a certain task that you want to tie in, it's very easy to do so. Awesome. So, okay. So another question I want to ask you, right? So 
And I think you mm -hmm. kind of already answered it, but I just want you to kind of elaborate on this, if that's all right, Marcus, is how best um, should squash itself, so squash is a sport and, and clubs, how best should they use this technology to actually grow the game that clearly we all love? I mean, you're approaching a topic there, which is kind of funny because I don't know, like I've always been a very like, because I'm an outsider of squash, um, I, I have very mixed feelings about a lot of things in squash. First of all, squash people in general are not the best business people, which is a very good thing and a very bad thing. On the one side, it's bad because they probably never, like some of them don't really calculate their revenue on a proper way. They don't have a clear business understanding or, or a clear plan of what they want to do. They don't know how much their people spend. They're okay with things going so-so. Um, on the other hand, that exactly um, brought us in the situation that we still have enough squash centers that we can actually upgrade. Because if it was a purely like money-driven element, um, a lot of the squash centers by now should have been closed down a long time ago to make place for a fitness studio, a garage, or whatever, or even a storage, where you would just say the operating cost is lower and the revenue is higher. Um, fortunately enough, there's a lot of people that really love this sport for a reason, because it is a great 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 activity and um now i think it's just like with more centers closing down the, the element is what can you actually do to improve your business and we're a very very uh interesting and profitable solution for that so if we can and so far even the centers that do not well meaning like centers that are just not interested in getting new uh customers in they say okay we have our club uh, members and they should just be happy even those realize that there's a rapid increase in play time which also leads to more even like revenues at the bar and, and their sandwiches at their uh, sunbeds and whatever um so i mean I'm, I'm not trying to preach like everybody needs to have an interactive squash system but especially with federations and with with clubs just look into it do your math and most of the stuff actually solves itself so, I mean, that's, you've made some really interesting points there. And, and you know, that I find that really interesting anyway, because I am in business. And, um, you know, although I'm not, I haven't got a great business mind, um, I think you're right. So a lot, and the, the funny thing is, a lot of people that play squash um, re famously or renownedly are people who are businessmen or in high level jobs or high paid jobs. It seems to be especially in this country, considered as a, almost as a posh man sport, uh, which, is, which is quite funny, really. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you something, because I've, I've heard about MoTrack, and obviously I've heard about the interactive wall. Are these two completely different products, or are they integrated? Hmm. So, um, so the easiest way to, to answer that question is, so interactive squash is a, is a full all-in solution. Like we, we sell you the hardware, we have a small license fee, and for that you get the full package. Like there's no upgrades, there's no, now you wanna buy that feature, now you wanna buy the second generation. Um, when we launched it, we, we took some time to actually, before we installed the first systems, and we said, let's make sure we have a good plan for the next five to 10 years, how to be utilizing that hardware that we put there because you don't want to come back and say it's nice that you bought the hardware and three years later if you want to have the cool functions now um we're going to have to send you this and we have to refurbish um which even goes down to points that everything is like highly reliable stuff it's industry grade we have a projector that can run up to twenty five thousand hours without even having to be cleaned so you just have to go there and take the dust off you don't need to take out the light bulbs or whatever so coming with that strategy, um, obviously we have a couple of functionalities which are not out there yet. MoTrack is a very good example of that. Um, we ha always had the cameras in our system. Um, people asked us, what are they for? And we always avoided their things like, yeah, yeah, you're going to see blah, blah, blah. And then we had the partnership with the PSA where we announced that we're going to be doing the statistics. And that was also the day where we just opened up all the functionalities and people would just see, okay, there's a ghosting app right now. How does that work? Oh, it works with motion tracking. Interesting. So now we've been working and refining that also with the help of the PSA because they give us valuable a valuable playground to actually be testing out everything and now one of the next updates will have the exact same motion tracking that you see at the psa but usable within the system and without any extra cost you can just have your interactive squash system you switch it on you play a for example a normal round of squash best of five um 
and um, the system counts your rallies, the system counts how far you run, you get your heat maps, you can literally compare yourself to all the PSA matches. And that's one example of a functionality that just comes. There's four or five more functionalities that will be uh, that we will pop out within the uh, coming uh, months. And yeah, it's just a great way because it also engages people a lot. And it's like, it's basically the same way that Tesla, all of a sudden there's a new feature, it's a software update and wow, all of a sudden you can use this and that. Wow. It, it sounds, honestly, it just sounds mind blowing. And I, 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 do, I personally think that this wall is the future of Squatch. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was talking about this uh, last night with um, a guy from my own club, a guy called Oliver Griffiths, who, again, absolutely loves the product. And when it comes to things like tournaments and competition based, it's going to be, it, it's going to take a lot away from where, you know, whether that was in or out as such, because obviously it's just going to put a marking on the wall where the ball was. So it's a bit like having a free mm -hmm. ref. Um, and as far as growing the sport, I think having that technology in place where all of a sudden you're taking away this white box with red lines and you're actually making something virtual, something almost come mm -hmm. along. Um, and I, I, I love that idea. I just love that concept of I've never played the game before, so now I get to play a game with this interaction that has never been known before. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, for, for us, like I said, it's it's all about how do you make it engaging and fun enough for people to actually overcome that thing. Okay, now we're going to go into a squash center. Um, we still have the squash centers. They're, they're still there as, as real estate. We have all the players. We have all the trainers. We have all the federations, clubs. And it would be just so sad to, to, to see it all go away. And um, right now we're opening up this whole new dimension of what a squash court can be and what the experience of playing squash with your friends with your kids with your like also people on different levels even like playing it alone playing it with two people against the system playing it with three people like it, it just like sorts of brings it into the digital world and the, the the possibilities are endless i mean we have people spending two and a half hours on court now um, i don't know how many people you know that go to their squash center and, and spend two and a, two and a half hours on a court well, I spend about five um, minutes and then spend the other huh? time resuscitation, usually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, we agree with you. With this this is the future of the sport or the, the, the court and, and all the integration. I mean, it still takes some time for people to realize that. Um, because, I mean, it's like with every new technology in the very beginning, people were like, why would you need a phone that you can carry around? If you want to call somebody, you're going to be at home anyways. Like why why spend so much money to have this giant brick of a cell phone? Um, it's a it's a technology that we can't even think about not having nowadays. So You're yeah, right potential right. is is endless, um, but it takes time for people to adapt and understand and, and grow the awareness. So, just one final question, really, um, from myself as as myself and Bevan. Obviously, we're we're massively involved with squash. How in if you were to say to us, right, Bev, Jay, if you do this, you will help us. How can we as a as a podcast and as a, a small business, how can we help you as a big company raise awareness and, and um, sort of market this this product in the UK? Well, first of all, we're still a very, very small company. <laughs> so we're not a big company. The funny thing is like a lot of people by now always think because we get a lot of traction and we do a lot of things but um it's it's we have 20 centers now and we're having two to four per month being upgraded so so we, we get, got a lot of traction and it's going well but we're, we're far from being like a big company i mean we work our ass off we we have our night shifts everything we work on new features um and and everything's well um the main thing that we're looking for right now is um, we, we're still in a very slow business. Squash courts in general and squash operators are not known to be like the most fast and 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 uh, open to change. Um, Holland, for example, is is incredible. We're going to be having I think five centers soon in Holland. Um, they're just like so open to innovation. They're basically like, wow, this is amazing. When can we have it? Whereas UK is like, oh my God, that's, oh no, it's expensive. It's never going to pay off. Let's not think about it for half a year. And even if they want to have it, it just takes, 
a year sometimes i mean we have to have the committee decision we have to uh, we also wanted to do a renovation of our floors and and so things just take time um which we're well aware of um what we need right now is people just to spend the time to look into it because you still have a lot of old-fashioned thinking where people say like oh no squash centers we we just had a meeting with somebody and says the only future for squash is if we manage to get the the courts as cheap as possible almost for free um and and that's like somebody who has a couple of squash centers and i'm like that's i don't know which business would ever run on that premises like it's um i mean you have to have a better product not a cheaper product that everybody's not wanting at the moment or like the big masses are not wanting so it's all about awareness and and take the five minutes to look into it look at the videos talk with the centers that already upgraded ask them how they make their money and yeah then you should be able to make a decision very easy you said that you've got a club in the uk that's got this interactive wall already what club is yes Well, we had a little bit of a hiccup with Squash England in the beginning, which killed our whole sales pipeline. Squash is like UK is one of the countries where we have the least amount of centers and leads so far. It's now changing a lot because now people are realizing it. We have one center in Windfield Falls, which is a center park location. Center Park is now in the process of integrating it into more centers. I can't exactly say because they haven't... uh, we can't announce yet where the second one is going, but it's going to be coming up in the next weeks. Um, and we, we're now gaining more and more interest from, from all the people that have been in contact with us in the very beginning. So I think like by end of the year, we're probably going to have something between yeah, seven, eight, uh, maybe even 10 systems in the UK. Um, some of them in fitness chains, some of them in, uh, in, in university clubs, some of them in privately owned uh, or in, in, in commercial clubs. Um, yeah, so we're, fingers crossed, we just signed a deal with a with our um, distri- with a distribution partner in the UK. Also, they, they do all the installations, which is Fired Up Tech from Leeds. Great team. Um, we're going to be at some expos. Um, so, yeah, we're just about to get started in the UK now. That's, that's awesome. Mate. It, it's good to know that this is going in the right direction. Now... Yeah, they're waking up. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> slowly. The thing is, I'm I'm a disabled squash player. Okay, so I started out squash, my squash journey in a wheelchair, uh, and I've now mm-hmm. sort of progressed, and I now play on calipers. Um, and mm-hmm. so I'm in the kind of the same boat really as you, because I'm trying to develop disabled sport in a sport where disabled sport doesn't exist. So I'm trying mm-hmm. to campaign that myself. So from a disability point of view, how, this is just an ear brain question really, but from a disabled point of view, this this wall, could this be integrated into a a more of a disabled function? Are are there functions on the system that could say, you know, like for me when I was first learning how to um, play, it was was all about balance. So is there Mm -hmm. a future where this wall would be able to tell me how I'm standing or my position, you know, would, 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 is that technology even possible? Well, uh, first of all, there's already quite some cool work with uh, wheelchair squash in uh, in Holland. Mark Weltkamp, um, our partner in Holland, like they installed one system in Alphen, and they have quite, I think, the the um, this, uh, wheelchair tennis champion co- also comes from their center and they're like doing a lot of work and they're, they're really, really like super integrated and they're, um, um, they're, they're, I think they have like 30 people or whatever in their tennis group and they now started playing a wheelchair, um, squash also, which is obviously because one thing that, that our system does really well, it sort of lets you adjust really, really on a very gr- granular level what your skills are required to achieve a certain task. Whereas normal squash is like you play against me, depending on my skill level, your skill level, we're just going to be competing. If our skill levels are far apart, 
it sort of is not real fun for both of us um, because we, we don't, can't establish a real um, a challenge. Whereas if I tell you to have a simple training module or shoot monsters or have something where you only have to run to these locations where we know that you're only going to be using half of the court um, or or these things, there's it opens up a lot of possibilities to come up with other challenges and have that gamification element where we can very finely adjust um, what needs to be accomplished and then obviously also give you the feeling of accomplishing it. Um, so with the cameras we have, there's a lot of motion tracking that we haven't even launched yet also. I mean, we have the motion tracking, not where are you in court. Later on, we're also going to be able to tell you how many lunges did you do, how far did you reach out, how far did you retract out of your lunge position back to the T which also opens up the whole thing. We can measure uh, push-ups. So we are now working on a, on, a, on a schooling system for kids where they do their rallies with uh, just drives. And the kid that actually loses the drive rally because he messes up the shot has to take like 10 push-ups on the other side of the court. And the system actually counts the push-ups. And as long as he didn't do the push-ups, the other ones uh, maybe are not allowed to continue to play so literally they have to wait and fire him up and go like come on finish it we want to continue um so yeah the, the whole thing is is a very smart immersive system and the applications i mean we're open for it if you have ideas and you say like listen i'm in a wheelchair but i find it very challenging to accomplish this and that or this is what messes up my game flow can you find a solution to actually overcome that and and make it more of a flow state of playing for me or i would like to be challenged more on this side um then with an interactive score system that's very easy wow, <laughs> wow that's, that's, it's just honestly i i mean you're obviously very passionate about it and and you're talking to someone who is i love technology um i love squash and this is like the perfect combination this is technology and squash i, I literally couldn't be happier um <laughs> cool So what are your thoughts on squash uh, not making the Olympics? Well, I have a lot of mixed feelings. And just coming back from Chicago, I also had a lot of talks with people that are involved in squash and, uh, and players that are involved in squash. And to be short, uh, I think it's probably still the absolute right decision not to include it. And, um, people will hate my guts for it. And I'm super invested in squash. I, I love the sport. It's, it's great athletes. They deserve to be in there. I agree that. But um, I've, I've said it from the very beginning when, when we went into squash, a lot of things in squash are broken and they need to be fixed and people are not realizing from the inside point of view um, what's actually wrong with it. Because for example, events, sport events are not supposed to be sport tournaments. They're supposed to be engaging, they're supposed to be fun. So um, instead of the sport trying to change the Olympics, you have to realize that most of the sports that are in the Olympics would probably fail to get in it today. Even tennis um, and stuff like that, it, it, it's highly questionable that if they would, would be on the same lines today because they are not improving. They're not like growing. And if you look at all the sports that have been accepted recently, it's because they're growing and they're hip and they attract a new form of audience and, and advertising companies can actually work with them and, and realize, okay, these are the people that are going to be buying our products in the future. I mean, in some countries, the average squash player is 40 years old. That's a target audience. If you're a sponsor, you don't want to have that target audience. You want to have like the 15, 16, 20 year people, because if you can like pay a lot of money to be present in the Olympics, I'd rather have these people follow me instead of like a sport that says, but we deserve to be in it because there's a 15 year old article in Forbes saying we're the healthiest sport. Um, so yeah, it has a lot of, it's, it's a lot of about self uh, reflection and and yeah and just growth i think growth is is always the key element to any attractiveness i think with with yeah. thing with products like the interaction wall i think it's going to make squash a lot more appealing especially when companies can then start ad using this product to actually advertise as well it, do you think that's going to help the sport 
Well, I think it's not just the, the, the experience. I think it's, it's a grassroots thing. Um, I think in order to be attractive performance like the, the, the Olympic Committee, it needs to be, wow, look what's happening in squash. We already have some business reports coming out now, which which already like go um, and and like really really well known uh, uh, companies that actually go out and say, hey, with the dawn of the smart uh, interactive squash courts, um, this means that squash is is going to be like a massive massive growth in the next couple of years, which might be true, and we 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 very much appreciate that, but it's a very simple thing. If your kids that it say that it's the hot stuff, and if you actually see that there's a lot of growth in it, that's when people are interested. So yeah, when you say it like that, it it makes perfect sense, Marcus. It really does. Um, so Marcus, listen, I wanted to thank you so much for your time today, and I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, you've raised some really good points, um, and I really look forward to the future of this technology um, and also, I think, the future of the sport. So, Marcus, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. Well, I can't thank you enough for having the show. I mean, stuff like formats like these are, are very, very important to, to push, especially like small sports like squash and, and, and grow the community and make everybody understand um, who's doing what and, and get a little bit of an outside view. So, yeah, thanks so much for your effort and for the great work. Thank you very much. Marcus, listen, you take great care of yourself and have a lovely evening. All right. Perfect. Take bye care. Bye-bye. Out of court. This is the Squash Pod. We are live on location at Sophia Gardens, the mecca of basically all sport that is, that is in Wales. And we are really lucky to be joined by David Evans, um, who is one of the, I guess, how, how would we describe you as one of the, um, the front runners or the, the leading lights, I guess, of squash in Wales. You've been around for a little while. Yeah. Um, I don't want to remind you of your age, David, but um, how old are you at the moment? Uh, 43. 43. So, yeah, I wouldn't one, say I'm uh, the leading light anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> one, one, one year older than me, uh, but you've certainly achieved a great deal in the game. Um, and you do so much to help the development of squash in Wales, don't you? Yeah, um, you know, I'm just fortunate to be a, um, a professional player myself from the age of 18. Yeah. Um, so I had many years on the professional tour, playing the tournaments and you know trying to get the world ranking. Yeah. Um, and then now I'm so obviously I moved um, after I finished playing. I went into coaching. Yeah. I moved to Jersey for five years, uh-huh. took up a coaching position there, and then came back to Wales and um, been here ever since. So at the height of your career, you, you kind of got to world number three, didn't you? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah sort of a long, long few years ago yeah. that was. But yeah, I managed to get to sort of three in the world and I managed to win a, a British and Open. And a British Open as well, yeah. Was, yeah a big in, achievement what, in myself. 2000 or so, 2000, yeah. that was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, amazing to have that memory. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's like, you know, loads of fond memories, really. And, yeah. you know, another one, they on a personal sort of level, but, uh, you know, we've reached the, the final of the World Team Championships with Wales, yeah. which you know didn't get publicised as much as some yeah. of the mainstream sports. But you know that's a you know, I'm a very proud Welsh person, and to do that as a team was was excellent. Yeah, yeah. oh fantastic. Um, so one of the things that um, that I was really really wanted to ask you about was your nickname. So nicknames seems to be all the rage in in squash at the moment. Depends which one you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to keep probably the clean one, I guess, Emu. Oh, so, right, yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. Where, how did this come about? Um, that's from a, another sort of uh, Welsh legend squash player, actually, a guy called Adrian Davis, who right. was, was instrumental in squash in Wales, and he set up the Leaks Wizards a long, long time ago. I think I've heard of that name. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he, he was yeah. a top ten player in the world, You know, someone who I used to look up to and someone, practice with. Someone said that he was incredibly talented, but it didn't quite reach because he had, he had all the talent in the world. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah. extremely talented player yeah. and read the game really well. But you know, to say he perhaps didn't reach his potential is perhaps quite unfair because you know, he did get a seven in the world when you had Jahangir Khan, Janja Khan, yeah. and they were around. So he, you know, he was a, he was a yeah. very, very good player. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so he was the one that came up with a, a nickname of, of uh, Emu to me, actually. And it was uh, quite a bizarre sort of set of scene, uh, surroundings really. We were playing in the European Team Championships yeah. and uh, in France, Aix-en-Provence, and the tournament had finished and we sort of used to have a customary uh, game of football with some of the other countries before we sort of joined in with the festivities at the end. And uh, I was playing uh, up front, goal hanging as you do, trying to score. And just because of my height, 
etc above everyone else a piece of crap yeah yeah he, uh, he <laughs> came out with this name that lollopin emu so and it's stuck ever since <laughs> so i guess you you may have uh, sort of coined the whole nickname craze in squash maybe well, were I, nicknames the, the the done thing back then or no not so much no. back then that was it was more sort of the the banter back then right. whereas now the the nicknames are more sort of you know for tv the commentary yeah um it's done yeah. a lot sort of a lot yeah. different really yeah. probably some of the nicknames back in my day that you couldn't yeah. actually repeat fantastic one of, um the podcast that we're doing this month is uh focusing a, a little bit around technology in, in squash oh yeah yeah um and so i really really wanted to ask you with with the the length of career that you've had to maintain that level of success what would you say has been the secret to your longevity um, I think the main longevity is more being smart with the training really yeah um, looking after your body yeah um, you know sort of the, the, the boring things really of warming up cooling down yeah. and just and just generally maintaining your yeah your, you know, your body and you know another thing is to be honest with you you've got to be lucky as well you know yeah. no injuries yeah no injuries or no serious injuries you know there's lots of people you know, they, you know uh, another guy who used to be the national coach, he retired um, when he was 26 at two in the world, Chris Robertson. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's just un unlucky as well. How, how have you seen technology change in the sort of 20 odd years that you've been competing? Oh, you know, hugely. The, the, f the first and foremost are the rackets. Yeah. You know, when I first started as a, as a youngster, it was the wooden racket, yeah. where you know you sort of forced you to play double handed, really, because they were that heavy. Yeah. Um, so the rackets of today, they, you know, they're so much lighter. A um, lot more powerful, you know. That, that's that's a big thing, which makes the game a lot faster, um, a lot more dynamic, a lot more sort of shots. Yeah. Uh, the other the other thing is the is the actual squash court, the glass box that we play in. Yeah. Uh, when sort of I remember when I was playing, it was it was a perspex court where you know you, to, to watch it on telly you couldn't really see the players, never mind the ball. Yeah. Um, but but now you know if you, anyone's lucky enough to see the squash TV. You know, you, this, the the pictures are amazing. It's a lot clearer. The courts are a lot better. The lighting. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, they're generally doing a, a you know a really good job. To be honest, they're trying to, yeah. to make it a lot more yeah. visible for everyone. Um, and last question, David, yeah. um, is uh, what one piece of gear or technology would you say you couldn't do without? Well, I'm going to be boring just as a, a squash player. You can't do without a racket. Ah, oh, <laughs> you can do better than that. Can I do better yeah. than that? Yeah. Well, any bit of any bit of kit or technology? Can't do without, but. People who know me, they'll know this is probably not Old true, school. but my, my heart rate monitor. Ah, uh, right, okay. Just so, to know whether I'm, not that I am anymore, but whether you're training in the correct yeah. correct zones. So are you one of these that your heart rate comes, you're super fit naturally or gen genetically, or you have to work at it? Um, well, at my age, I wouldn't say any of those, no. no. But, um, but no, it's the same as anything. I know you get some people who are a, a little bit naturally fit, but they they generally put the work in. No, yeah. one, no one can not, at top level, nobody can get... Um, extremely fit without putting the hard work in yeah. so that you know that that's just a motto for any player any level yeah, that, yeah. Um, you know if you if you want to get fit you need to work hard and if yeah. you want to hit a good squash ball you need to hit lots of balls yeah, so practice yeah. will exactly will get you there so really you've had to kind of adapt your game over time or was fitness not your thing uh, when you were in your 20s yeah and then, to be honest the game when I played you know was a lot different to what it is now it was a lot more traditional attritional back in the day yeah whereas now you know, the game is far more exciting with all the, the fast racket, the good rackets and the courts. Skills so it's a lot more dynamic yeah. now. So physical side is, is yeah. a lot more important yeah. um, in the game nowadays. Yeah. So, you know, they need to look after themselves and, yeah. oh, exactly. and do really well. Oh, brilliant. David, thank you so much for joining us. That's okay, right. no problem. Thank yeah, you. Absolute legend. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Okay, so we are joined by none other than Marwan El Shabagi. The absolute legend from Egypt. Um, so Squashpod is extremely lucky to have Marwan. Uh, we are on court number. What court are we on, Marwan? Actually, no idea. <laughs> no, no idea. It's not, it's not one of the main two courts, though. Maybe court number three, I would say. Maybe court three. Yeah. You had some decent victories on court three. I never played on that court before. I played on one and two. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I played, I played the World Junior Open on the 17. Yeah. I remember that one. And I played it on the 19. I think on the, on the 17. I won the on the 17. And then I came second in the on the 19. Yeah. So I, I, I played the World Junior Open a couple of times. And then I, uh, this is my first season to play for the PSL team as well here, which is, yeah. which is just perfect for me. It's not far from Bristol, where, where I'm based. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, Cardiff is a nice city. I mean, the supporters, I mean, the, the support we've had all season is fantastic. And, yeah. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I would love to. 
I'll definitely be playing for the for the, for the, yeah. the team uh, next season. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant because obviously just narrowly missing out on promotion. We need players like you playing more often. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, you've your highest world ranking is number three, right? Yeah. Um, so um, and you're known as the Jackal. Yeah. So wh why the Jackal? Well, to be honest, I don't know why they've chosen <laughs> that name for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some people think it describes me the best. Some people don't. You're, don't a, think so. you're a hunter on court. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe um, I don't know. I, I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> they call me the jackal. I mean, if it suits me, it suits me. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't really think it suits me the best. I would say, but um, but yeah. I mean, I enjoy. I mean, people enjoy it, and I enjoy yeah. it. I mean. So for the listeners who are listening, obviously our podcast is designed to uh, for people in Wales. Uh, so we have a lot of people who who maybe aren't familiar with with yourself, um, but you're Egyptian, right? And Egypt, Egypt is so dominant in the world of squash at the moment. Wales doing very well as well, right? Um, I actually yeah. think so. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, the reason why I think Egypt is very good at squash, I think it started with a player like Ahmed Barada back in the days, where people were basically there was a good marketing marketing team behind him. And I think I'm, like I used to go to the tournament at the pyramids, and I used to go and watch him and learn from him a lot, you know. Uh, I think after Barada we had Chabana who became world champion, the first Egyptian ever to become world number one as well, and then Rami after Darwish and my brother. I mean, we only had, you know, I think we've always had a pair to follow, you know. Uh, of course, the parents were pushing us, I would say, uh, pushing us too hard. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you don't really know, you don't know what's the right decision, what's the wrong decision yeah. for you, you know. So it's, it's always good to have your parents, you know, pushing you towards your goal, to achieve your goal. Uh, but I think, to be honest, the squash in Wales is doing amazing. I mean, it's doing better than I would say 10 years ago. I mean, now you've got players like Joel Makin, who's inside the top 20, and uh, you've got Tesney Evans, she's inside the top 10. So, I mean, yeah. the squash in Wales is getting better very, and bigger. And, uh, very exciting for us. It's yeah. very exciting, you know. I mean, yeah. Joel is really young, Tesney's really still young. Peter Pleed, of course, is still there. He's based in, with me in Bristol and he's playing amazing squash. And, you know, yeah. it's, uh, Emir as well, Tesla's brother. I mean, squash yeah. in Wales is getting, for me, I think I see it better. I mean, I think Dave Evans, is, of course, as a head coach, of course, he must be doing a great job with them. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, if we can get more people in Wales doing just like you and, and, and Mohammed, um, you know, there's just, generations just, of kids who are going to be. Just me, not Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> just me, yeah, yeah, just me. Um, one last question for you, Marwan. Um, in terms of technology uh, in, in squash, um, what? How do you use technology in your training routine? I mean, to be honest, what sort I'm, of technology I'm, I'm, do you use? Uh, with technology, I don't really. I wouldn't say I'm using technology really. I mean, just getting on court and yeah. just getting on with it really. I mean, um, I, I, I won't say. I mean, technology. I mean, I'm, I'm, do you, do you track data? Do I would you? Watch, I know, the only thing yeah. I would do probably watch my matches and learn from the mistake I've done and see my weakness area and try to improve them. Yeah. Just getting inside the court and. I mean, if you go inside the court and you just train with no, uh, with, without any targets, you know, then yeah. I think it's just useless, you know, like you have, there, there, there have to be an aim to improve, or something to improve, you know, you, know, you have to improve your game, you know, if you keep doing the same thing, you'll never improve as a player, you know, you have to see where your weakness part is and you have to work on it, you know, you have to kind of get out of your comfort zone a little bit. I mean, you have to find your comfort zone and get out, get out of it make, it, make it harder for yourself, you know. If it's always nice and easy, then you'll never get better, yeah. you know, in a way. So it's, um, it's just, I would say, always like train clever, more like train clever, not, don't just train hard for no reason, you know. Exactly, exactly. Um, Marwan, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, thank you very much. Good luck tonight. Thanks, mate. Okay, so we're lucky enough to be joined by Emir Evans, current world ranking, correct me if I'm wrong, about 115? Spot on. Yeah, Spot pretty on, good. Yeah. From what I can see, you're really starting to hit quite a bit of form. Yeah. Um, I think, was it February you had two kind of semi-final events? Yeah. Yeah? yeah, is that right? That was, yeah, I had uh, one in Calgary, Canada, and one in Atlanta in the States. Yeah, oh, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Back to back semi finals, so yeah, that was it. Yeah. Two. Yeah, I kind of had like one or two results against higher than my ranking, but I happened to have a few in both tournaments and was quite consistent. Yeah. So yeah, it was a good two weeks. Anything in particular that's working well for you at the moment? 
I think just like consistent hard work. Yeah. Literally, I know everyone says it, but there's no like, no secret. Yeah. Just keep plugging away and plugging away, yeah. and then sometimes and, it'll just. And, and hey, fall. you're you're young. You're of good. Yeah. You're of good sporting stock, right? So yeah. you know you've got time on your side, and yeah. it's going to work out for you. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of helps to have you know such good players in a family, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, like I'm so fortunate. Like my dad is my coach as, as well as Dave, but like having that like just at home talking about yeah. squash, being around a squash court when you grow up. Yeah. Obviously my sister who's helped yeah. me out a lot as well. So spot on. Yeah. So I mean a little bit about what we're doing here today, because you guys are doing something awesome. Yeah. I believe you're working with the schools yeah. uh, to get to get youngsters involved in squash. what's that all about? Yeah, so basically it's called like uh, the gold mine. So it's like throughout Wales they're doing it in north, just schools coming into clubs, wherever it's closest with one of the coaches and just literally like coaching them, playing squash, getting them introduced because that's where a lot of numbers come from. You want to get them from schools. And I, gu I guess historically you would, you'd rely on PE teachers to take the kids yeah. to, to a local so, club. Yeah, yeah, obviously it's got to be influenced by them as well. Like they, yeah. they need to push it, but um, I mean all the PE teachers seem like pretty like buzzy about it they want kids to do it and, yeah um, like today seeing all them it's really yeah. good to see it's so nice to see them having so much fun yeah you know um so i'm looking around and i'm thinking i'm more excited than the kids because yeah. like you know just, i i want to get autographs yeah. and stuff but they're having a lot of fun on court with you guys there's one yeah. kid on particular wasn't there yeah he was um <laughs> hitting some I mean, pretty I good got, length yeah i've got a match later and he was just <laughs> <laughs> we do so much work front and back, front and back. Yeah, you would take him to one side, Emma, and say, "Listen, come on, Look, yeah. got a mat, take yeah. it easy, son." But no, it yeah. was good. Yeah, it was, it was good to see all the parents enjoying themselves as well. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, and especially like a night like this, I think that's why one of the reasons yeah. it's helped the Welsh Wizards because it's bringing all these kids yeah. in, seeing all these like like Marwan and yeah. sister. And, yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, listen, Emmett, good luck, good luck with the rest of your Thank career. You, you yeah. don't need it. I know you're going to smash it, and good Thank luck you. tonight. Cheers. Thanks, Thank mate. You. So you are back with the squash pod again, and this time we've got none other than Tesney Evans with us. <laughs> hey, how so, are you doing? Yeah, really, really good. So, um, for a lot of people listening, they may not even be aware of who Tesney Evans is. So let me enlighten them. Okay, so, so Tesney Evans, seven times Welsh champion, little, little pause, yeah? <laughs> two times British champion, and the first Welsh woman to break into the top ten, and you've now regained that top nine spot, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. So, absolutely amazing. So, Tesney, I suppose you never tire of hearing the stats, do you? <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Do you do you uh, tell them to yourself every every day or? No, definitely. No? I definitely do not. No. <laughs> when you walk into a room. <laughs> no, right? Tesney <laughs> Evans coming through. Yeah. No, definitely. No. No, no. Um, so Tesney, um, you are renowned for working with young young people in squash, mm -hmm. and squash Wales are doing fantastic things in getting people into squash. Um, here tonight we're doing some fantastic things mm -hmm. and it's amazing to see some kids enjoying themselves with you on such an amazing level so what exactly um, do you get out of helping youngsters get into the game why do you love it so much I think I think I love it so much because I love the sport so much yeah. um, I just want to see people enjoying it you know and it's important like when I was a kid I had role models, I had people that I looked up to and the people that took me on court and started me off. And was that your it, dad? Or? Yeah, exactly, yeah. like my dad. And there was a few people at St. Mellon's and, you know, when I was a kid and not really playing, you yeah. know, I couldn't really hit the ball. or And people would take their time out after a match to just, you know, hit a few balls me and it meant the world to me. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I try and, like, sort of reciprocate back to kids. And if that makes their day and going on court and hitting a few balls around, having a game, like, it's nothing out of my yeah. day, really. So yeah. I just love it and I hope that... You know, as the Wizards and all the Welsh players that are doing so good at the minute can literally get more people playing in squash in Wales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing, there's so much feedback about you, Tesney, is that how approachable you are and how lovely you are. Um, and That's lies, it's lies. <laughs> no, I'm okay. just kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we all know that's not true. So, um, I know that a lot of people in Wales would want to thank you and, you know, you're just incredible for what you're doing for the sport. So, what are we doing tonight? 
um, for kids. So what, what is gold mine and what, what, how are you involved with that? Um, the gold mines are just um, another initiative to get the children in playing and I don't know how it works down here, obviously being from North Wales, my sister actually runs one up where we live. Um, and they're just amazing. They get people that are probably either ne- never played or they're just interested and they can bring people. And it's like three pound, I think, for a session. And, yeah. and it's just basically a coach is there to go on call with people and, and involve them in it. And I think they've grown from having a couple people to like bit, basically having like 20, 25 people in them. So. so what can kids in Wales do to get involved in this program? Um, I'm not sure on this. Will they ask their PE teacher? Yeah, or I think I contact think they're, they're low, contact squash Wales. But they yeah. they run basically around in all the local centres, so yeah. centres, and um, like they have one here at the national centre, I think. And yeah, um, yeah they're, they're all around Wales, whether you're north, mid, um, or south, and they're a great initiative, and people are doing great stuff with them, really. Yeah. Okay. Only two other things I want to ask you, yep. Tessie. Um a little bit of our podcast this month is around technology and squash. Yeah. Um, what can you talk us through your training routine and how you integrate any kind of technology into that, whether it's gear or tech or technology? Um, so probably to, the biggest thing that would be technology for me would be a sort of heart rate monitor, yeah, uh, so watch, track and your fitness, track track the fitness sessions. Um, a big one is the is the track sessions during the summer. Yeah. Um, so basically, we'll track la- uh, track lap times, heart rate, yeah. um, how much I'm recovering during those sessions, during the laps. Um, and obviously for timing, most important. Would that be the one bit of gear that you just couldn't do without? Yeah, or is during that... the summer, definitely. Yeah. I would say a, a really good heart rate monitor with tracking and GPS on it. Yeah. Just because then when you log it onto your computer, you can completely see the track. Yeah. So you can literally re-roll the laps and yeah. see sort of how you're recovering at different stages, which is important. So. Superb, superb. Yeah. Um, last question. Um, anyone who's thinking about playing squash mm-hmm. or getting into it, yeah. what would you advise them? Um, stick with it. I think for a beginner who's never played before, it's very difficult, and they probably don't really understand rules and sort of everything going on. Yeah. Um, I think from the outside out, it can be quite complicated, but in reality, it's very simple. But I would say stick with it, and and I would highly advise when you first start playing is to get a little bit of coaching, just as no, you know, forehand, backhand, no, just know what you're doing, and then play as many games as possible and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, brilliant, Tesney. No problem. Thank you so much, and good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Match ball. Bevan, mate, what a show, man. What a show. Yes, mate. I hope you guys have really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's pretty action-packed, pretty full. Um, I've got nothing to say, mate. I've I've really enjoyed this show in particular. I've really enjoyed doing and I've really enjoyed the journey so far that Squash Pod's taken, mate. So... um, yeah, I think hopefully, hopefully the, the the people listening will agree and, and let's just keep up the good work. Yeah, one thing we do want to say is um, please give any feedback you can for us because it's a big help to us. Any feedback online, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, just hit us up with, with comments as well. We, we you know we want to hear from you yeah because we're also getting quite a few listeners in now as well so the listener um literally so from the show one and show two our listeners ranged doubled that's really? quite yeah 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 so it's quite and our downloads um doubled as well so no, just, the, just your family just just my family yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're getting bigger and bigger um Oh. So, yeah, so if you want anything shouted out as well, like we've got the warm up and that's what we use it for. So if you want us to shout anything out about your uh, your club, uh, exactly the same as we did for the cardigan. Um, yep. Yep. Let us know. Uh, yep. And other than that, if you've got anything else you want to pitch in, uh, you can find the links and everything. Just yeah, type uh, in the squash pod. And also stories as well. Right, Jay? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So pe- and if anyone's got stories that, you know, of their lives in, in squash, we want to we want to hear from you. And interview you, you know. Yeah, exactly. Because it can't know. always be about me. I mean, Come. even though I'm amazing, it can't always be about me, Bevan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll save everyone and we'll say over and out. <laughs> yeah, wrap it up, brother. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed Squash Pod. And please join us next time. Thank you very much.